Namaste, this is Anvi Prabhu. Welcome back to my channel. So we've all just seen the vice presidential debates between J.D. Vance and Tim Walls. And I personally enjoyed this debate much more than I had enjoyed the presidential debate. Also, I've personally not seen any of the major speeches or any other debates with these two candidates prior. So my entire judgment literally comes from this one video and this one debate. And off the bat, I have to start with how confident and impeccable J.D. Vance's presentation seemed here. Uh, it reminded me of everybody raving about Kamala Harris's presentation and her confidence during the presidential debates, except maybe for her overly used expressions, facial expressions, which might not have been necessary, especially during a presidential debate, in my personal opinion. But that point aside, what made J.D. Vance's presentation much more authentic than Kamala Harris's was the clarity with which he spoke, the confidence with which he spoke, and the fact that he spoke about the nuances of the topics that were being debated about, rather than, you know, skirt around the subjects or even take massive U-turns against a certain thing that you have either stood for or haven't stood for, just for the sake of gaining people's votes and people's empathy. And I felt like he was really on top of his game. I was actually surprised to find that he came from the lowest likability rating of all the candidates. But watching the debate, it felt like there was so much clarity in what he spoke. And as I said, the nuances that he brought up were absolutely amazing. So were the moderators better in this debate as compared to the presidential debate? Maybe a little. They had apparently agreed not to fact check any of the candidates. Uh, but there were a few moments where it felt like a bit like, uh, something's off, something's not working, you know. And again, as I said, J.D. Vance was on top of his game and he handled it like a pro. Take a look. Governor, and just to clarify for our viewers, Springfield, Ohio does have a large number of Haitian migrants who have legal status, right. temporary protected status. Well, Mar 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 Nora, but, but thank you. No, Senator, no, we have no, no, so much to get to. Mar Margaret, thank I, you, I think Mara. it's important we're because... We're going to turn out of the, the debate, economy. Thank Margaret, you. Margaret, the, the, the rules were that the you economy, guys weren't going to fact check. And since you're fact checking me, I think it's important to say what's actually going on. So there's an application called the CBP One app, where you can go on as an illegal migrant, apply for asylum or apply for parole, and be granted legal status at the wave of a Kamala Harris open border wand. That is not a person coming in, applying for a green card and waiting for 10 years. That Thank is you, the Senator. facilitation of illegal immigration, Margaret, by Thank our you, own Senator, leadership. Thank you, Senator, for describing the legal and process. And Kamala, and have so coming to the next point, I feel like people are so desperate to paint the Biden and Harris administration as the administration that has achieved a lot and has done a lot of good for the society and that it has brought in so many wonderful changes. Well, it has brought in changes, but not necessarily for the good. So, for example, when they were talking about illegal migration, Tim Ball said that there were fewer crossings today than there were in the Trump's administration. But the official records say that in 2020, it was around 640,000 and odd. And now in 2024, in these 10 months, it stands at like 2.75 million. Like, that's not a small number. That's not in any sense a reduction in the numbers, is it? Now, I do not know what your personal stance on the topic of abortion is. I personally feel really conflicted. It's such a deeply moral question that I don't think that any political candidate or any person, for that matter, can come up with a solution that would fit all situations and all circumstances. I do feel that as common sense, you know, adults can definitely have the sense of responsibility to not let a situation get to the point of abortion. Of course, there are unfortunate circumstances uh, which are beyond anybody's control. So I don't know, I guess I'm both pro-life and pro-choice. It's, it's really hard for me to balance uh, my judgment on this particular situation. Coming to the debate, uh, Tim Walls refused that he supported abortion up until the time of birth. And yet he wasn't fact-checked, obviously, or corrected. But here is the bill that he signed in Minnesota that supports abortion up till birth. When they were speaking about children being used as drug mules, uh, Walls outright denied the accusation and J.D. Vance proceeded to fact-check it himself. To me, one of the most important moments uh, was when they were speaking about the First Amendment rights. This happened during towards the end of the debate. I'll let the video speak for itself first. 
I believe that we actually do have a threat to democracy in this country, but unfortunately, it's not the threat to democracy that Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz want to talk about. It is the threat of censorship. It's Americans casting aside lifelong friendships because of disagreements over politics. It's big technology companies silencing their fellow citizens. And it's Kamala Harris saying that rather than debate and persuade her fellow Americans, she'd like to censor people who engage in misinformation. I think that is a much bigger threat to democracy than anything that we've seen in this country in the last four years, in the last 40 years. Now, I'm really proud, especially given that I was raised by two lifelong blue collar Democrats, to have the endorsement of Bobby Kennedy. Jr. and Tulsi Gabbard, lifelong leaders in the Democratic coalition. And of course, they don't agree with me and Donald Trump on every issue. We don't have to agree on every issue, but we're united behind a basic American First Amendment principle that we ought to debate our differences. We ought to argue about them. We ought to try to persuade our fellow Americans. Kamala Harris is engaged in censorship at an industrial scale. She did it during COVID. She's done it over a number of other issues. And that, to me, is a much bigger threat to democracy than what Donald Donald Trump said when he said that protesters should peacefully protest on January the 6th. I wholeheartedly agree. I am someone that believes in absolute freedom of speech. Now, no matter what someone believes might have taken place in a particular situation, no matter what someone has said, hasn't said, all that aside, if you just take what he has said in this snippet, theoretically, I do agree that, you know, censorship would definitely prove to be more harmful in a society than the possible harmful effects of absolute freedom of expression. Now, differences are unavoidable. That is what makes a human society. And I yearn for a society where my opinions are agreed and also disagreed on. Like we can all agree to disagree. But to shut down voices of a certain section just because they have opposing views to yourself... I think it, it makes the human society look really feeble and weak because especially if you take it in today's climate, how exactly even do you define hate speech or harmful speech? If you misgender somebody that is taken as hateful speech and that person supposedly goes into depression or whatever, with all due empathy to anybody suffering from depression, I don't mean to downplay that. Uh, but as humans, are we really that weak that, you know, we can be triggered by somebody just misgendering us? Are our identities within ourselves really that feeble and fickle? But anyway, that's a whole different point. And keeping that aside, this was the last major debate, I believe, uh, before the elections in the US. Please comment below and let me know if the debates have you know changed or altered your perspectives in any way. Uh, what your opinions were about this debate and where you stand on either J.D. Vance or Tim Walls. And yeah, let me know in the comments below and join me in the conversation. And as usual, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It'll really, really help me to grow and reach more people. Uh, also like the video, share and until next time, take care.